Right, so we do have a bit to cover with today's video, but uh, the reason we have a bit to cover is because uh, it's such an important subject. Like, if you've got big goals, you've got big aspirations, then you really need to be careful about who you're associating with. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm covering my two most recent articles, which I posted in uh, uh, consecutive weeks, the, uh, the seven toxic people who are fatal to your success. <clears throat> and I wanted to start to give you an illustration of why this is important. I want you to come back with me about 10 years. Yeah, pretty much 10 years ago. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a big Liverpool fan. And uh, if you follow football at all, if you, especially if you follow Liverpool, then you know that we've got a big rivalry uh, with Manchester United. We've got a big traditional rivalry. So let's go back 10 years, right? I'm in Sydney with a friend of mine, uh, and it happens that Liverpool are playing Manchester United. So it's a big night in Sydney, and all the pubs are crowded. Uh, everywhere's packed out that's showing the game. And I went with this friend of mine. We went to, uh, we went to Star City Casino. And, uh, you know, there were a fair few people there. Uh, and one of my other friends was there, an old friend of mine named James. Uh, now, it happened that while my, uh, that uh, while me and this other friend of mine were Liverpool fans, are Liverpool fans, uh, James was a Manchester United fan. Uh, and that wasn't really a problem. I mean, in the end, it was a good game. Uh, like, Liverpool thrashed Man United. They thrashed them at, uh, at Old Trafford, which is Man United's home ground. And... Uh, Myself and this mate of mine and the Liverpool supporters that we were around, we were getting quite rowdy. I mean, we were just jumping up and down and singing as you do. And uh, they didn't seem to like that at the casino. And, you know, we'd had a few drinks and we were celebrating the fact that we were handing our, uh, our arch rivals a thrashing. And we were warned that we would get kicked out if the noise continued. Uh, and it was at the point, from what I remember, it was at the point where... It was we were pretty much condemned to being kicked out of Star City, being kicked out of the sports bar. And a couple of guys in our group were arguing with security. Uh, but then uh, but then Liverpool slotted in a fourth goal, like right near the end, to make the score 4-1. And that was pretty much it. We were done. We were out of there. We didn't care. Now, the funny thing was is that, uh, is that James got kicked out with us. Uh, he got kicked out with us. I suppose it doesn't help that uh, Man United's home jersey is predominantly red and so is Liverpool. And if you don't really follow football, you could just glance at us and you could say, oh, well, you know, they're both following the same team. But uh, now the thing was, uh, because James was with us, James was with our group, he got kicked out as well. And I still remember uh, saying to the security guard, no, no, he's, you know, he, he supports Man United. He's not celebrating, you know, like it, it's not his fault. But because he was with us, uh, he got turfed out um, into the early morning, and that was it. So, I mean, James, was he definitely wasn't singing or jumping about. Um, he was fairly despondent, as you'd expect. But because he associated with our group, he suffered the consequences with the rest of us, and he got kicked out. So that follows on with the theme of the, these last two posts, and this is why it's so important, because if you associate with, with the wrong people, um, and... I'm, I call them the wrong people because if, you, if you're ambitious, if you're looking to achieve success in your personal life and your career, these are the wrong people. And this is why they're the wrong people because even if it's not necessarily what you're doing that's affecting your outcomes, it's the people that you're with that are affecting what happens to you. So number one, I had insecure people. And the reason that these, these people came to mind, first of all, for me is because uh, I was one of these people. As I've spoken about uh, in the past, between the age of about 12 uh, and my mid-20s, so 25, so for about 12 years there, uh, I, was, I was an insecure person deep down. That really underpinned my decisions and my attitudes. Uh, and as they say, like attracts like. So the kind of person that you are, the kind of attitudes that you have deep down, yeah, generally you're going to attract those kind of people into your life. So I know insecure people well because obviously, when you spend twelve years, twelve years with that attitude, uh, being being at, at, at the bottom of the decisions that you make and the attitudes that you have, those are the people that you're going to attract. And the thing with insecure people and what makes them, uh, what makes them such an especially toxic kind of person is that, uh, on the surface level, 
they seem perfectly fine. They, they could be funny people, they could be attractive people and have a lot of, you know, have a lot of girlfriends or boyfriends or they could be very talented people with plenty of achievements and awards to their name. Like, on the surface level, they could look like a real success. But uh, their insecurity generally doesn't come out till later. It's not till you get to know them and they've known them for a while that little things start to, you start to notice little red flags. And I've listed them in this article. So if you haven't read it, uh, yeah, go ahead and take a look at it. And as you read it, see if any names pop up uh, as you read through it. But yeah, the thing about insecure people, and I wrote this down too, is that what makes them so toxic is that rather than dealing with, you know, rather than dealing with their own self-image, rather than dealing with their own issues and working through that, uh, instead they just look to tear down anybody who threatens that, um, who threatens the excuses that they've made. So, you know, they would rather tear other people down than face the uncomfortable truths, even if that's you. Like, um, if, if they feel threatened by you in any way, like, if they feel like you're going to move up to another level, like you're starting to make new friends or you're seeing somebody new or that there's these opportunities coming into your life that are going to help you advance your business or, you know, advance your own journey, they're going to be that, that little voice trying to knock you down, you know? They're, they're, going to try and te- they're going to try and tear you down. It will just be little, little offhanded comments disguised as humor or it could be more serious than that. And see, the thing with an insecure person is um, they're, they're perfectly cool to hang out with and they're, they're comfortable people to be around as long as they, they, they don't feel like you're rocking the boat, as long as they don't feel like you're challenging their, their view of themselves. Because if, you, if, if they start to think that you're doing better and that you're, you're growing, that you're outgrowing them, they're going to try and tear you back down because they, they don't want you highlighting their lack. And uh, yeah, like in a nutshell, the problem with insecure people is that you can't fix them. You know, it, it's their own journey. You can't, you can't turn them around. They have to work on that for themselves. But uh, yeah, if you're hanging out with these people, why? They're not going to help you. And until they deal with their insecurity, and it has a cure. I mean, I got through it myself. You know, I got through it and I just realized that, you know what? I actually, I don't have a reason to be insecure. Just like any other human being, you know, there's, there's things that I don't do so well, but there's a lot of things that I do great at. And above all else, I was willing to take risks I was willing to make mistakes and to be wrong. And that's how I learned. So with insecure people, they they have to come to that realization themselves. But you don't need to hang around and to deal with this sort of stuff. Um, You know, if if you're, especially if you're dating an insecure person, as I explained in the article again, you need to cut that off straight away uh, because that can get really toxic. So if you've got, uh, you just need to learn to identify the insecure people in your life. Uh, and then distance yourself from them. Because there's plenty of other people out there who are just as flawed as your insecure friends, uh, but you know they've got past that. They don't let it weigh them down. They don't let this feeling of lack weigh them down. They just get on with life. They're happy to make mistakes. They're happy to be wrong, but they keep growing. And if you want to keep growing and you want to keep getting better, then find those people and let your insecure friends, leave them in the, in the rear vision mirror and let them deal with their own problems. All right, who do we have next? Uh, people with the poverty spirit. Yeah, the, the, the poverty spirit, uh, unlike insecurity, it, it's a bit more easy to identify. The thing with, when, when people have the poverty spirit, it's like you get this kind of, this stuffy sort of constricted feeling. Like, you know, you know when you go into a room and, and, and the doors and the windows haven't been opened in a while and you step in there and it's just like, there's that stuffy air. That's the best way I can describe it, uh, the atmosphere when you hang out with these people who have the poverty spirit, uh, because just nothing really happens in their life. They're not expanding, not, they're not growing. Um, what underpins their, their attitude is, is this sense of lack, this sense of not being enough, not having enough. And um, again, if, if you want to attract abundance into your life, then having these people, having these people hang around you, having these people form your, your circle, they're like an anchor just dragging you back. You're not going to go forward because these people, their, their worldview is so small and it's so it's so constricted, and uh, they're not going to help. They're just going to be an anchor on on, on your sense of abundance uh, and on opportunity as well. See, the thing with people who have the poverty spirit is they complain about never having enough. They complain about people who've done them wrong. They have this. They generally have this view that uh, that life has it in for them, and. Uh, you, that, that's, not, that's not what winners think. It, it's a loser's mentality. 
So if, if you want to win, if, if you want to be winning in various areas of your life, you know, uh, to, to quote Sh- Charlie Sheen, you know, winning here, winning there, winning everywhere, why would you want to associate with people who are losing here, losing there, losing everywhere? Um, so yeah, the, for these, these people with the poverty spirit, their world just doesn't expand. Uh, and as I explained in the article, again, take a look at it for yourself. Take a look at the, the typical signs of a person with a poverty spirit if you're, uh, you're a bit on the fence about somebody. It's just that everything's owed to them, but they never give anything back. Their world doesn't expand. Their world doesn't grow. It just stays stale and it just stays, it, it, their world just stays in this little box. Uh, and if you want the opposite of that for your life, then don't hang around people who are attracting the opposite of what you want. It's just common sense, isn't it? All right, who we got next? The professional victims. All right. So I'm, I'm actually surprised that I haven't received much backlash on this because it's kind of a hot topic these days. Uh, as I said at the start of this piece, uh, professional victimhood's the new black. Like we live in an age that's very focused on identity politics and um, and uh, segregating people into who supposedly has privilege and who doesn't have privilege and who's the victim and who's the oppressor and it's a really cancerous race to the bottom. Um, I mean, yeah, sure, there's, there's there's injustices in this world and that is nothing new. Uh, that's not going to change as much as we'd like to. There's always going to be injustices in this world. And we should fight real injustices. Uh, but the problem, with, the problem with this victimhood culture is that uh, it encourages people who maybe have just faced the same setbacks that pretty much any other person does. Uh, and it's, it's, it's empowered these people to, um, to really indulge in this idea that they're the victim and that nothing happens for them and that everybody's against them. And again, it's a loser's mentality uh, because you can't outgrow your self-image. Remember that. See, the thing with these people is, even if they got what they wanted, even if they were afforded, um, excuse me, even like even if they were afforded all the all the the privileges that they imagine other people have had that they haven't, if they were given all those things that they believe have made other people successful, if overnight they had all of that handed to them, they'd still end up in the same situation. Because you can't outgrow your self-image. If you've only ever seen yourself as a victim, if that's your, if that's your comfortable worldview, in the same way that you know, for insecure people, their worldview is that they're they're not enough, that they're lacking, and that they have to they have to be something else in order to be acceptable to themselves. Uh, professional victims, they yeah, they just they they believe that everybody else has done them wrong. Rarely is anything ever their fault, you know. Um, and the, the thing with the victimhood mentality, it's, it's a cousin of the poverty spirit because both of them, they're rooted in this mindset that the world's against them and that people have done them wrong. And of course, none of this is their fault. It's not to do with their attitudes or their bad decisions. No, it's everybody else's fault. You know, um, It's this group over here or these people over there, but essentially it's always people being mean to them and they never grow out of this. Uh, and again... The thing, the thing with these people is, if you hang around with these people, um, you can you can lend them all the help and the support that you think is, is is good to do so. You can imagine yourself being that virtuous person that helps them fight the injustices against them. But if they have the victimhood spirit, the victimhood mentality, like the poverty spirit, not only is it like this anchor that's just holding you back when you're trying to go forward, but uh, at the first opportunity that they get to, when it's convenient for them. They're going to throw you under the bus. They'll do that. You'd better believe they will do that because more important than their relationship with you, uh, however long you've known each other, however long you've been friends for, anything like that. More important than that is, um, more important than that is preserving this identity, preserving this, this you know, oh, I'm the victim. Oh, you know, people are so mean to me, and you know, it's unfair. Preserving that identity is their number one priority. And you'd better believe they will throw you under the bus if it's convenient for them to do so. So, why attach yourself with people like that? You're not going to be a winner if you're attaching yourself to losers. And these people really are losers in the true sense of the word. They view themselves as losers. Um, they, they, they think like a loser. And again, you can't have that in your life. You can't be surrounded with that energy if you're trying to be a winner. So, you know, cut them off. 
distance yourself from them, and yeah, they're probably going to talk shit about you once you're gone, but stuff it. Soon enough, they'll find other people to talk shit about, and that's, that's not your fault at all, because they've got, to, they've got to deal with their own issues, they've got to outgrow the victimhood mentality, they've got to realise that uh, all around the world, people have grown up in all sorts of, um, have, have had all sorts of deficits to deal with, you know, uh, poverty, abusive families, um, changes of government, oppressive forms of government, all sorts of things. And yet, it doesn't really matter what backgrounds these people have found themselves in, people have succeeded. All over the world, people have done this because they refuse to identify themselves as the victim. They refuse to buy into that comforting narrative. Instead, they were willing more than anything to do whatever it took to get what they dreamed of. And that's how winners think. So... Don't attach yourself with people who are the opposite of that. Cut them off, you know, and don't lose a wink of sleep over the fact that they're just going to add you to the list of people who've done them wrong because soon enough they'll be complaining about somebody else uh, and they will have forgotten about you. Defeatists. Right, number four on the list. Yeah, defeatists to the people, um, defeatists to the people that will tell you to quit as soon as the going gets tough. And they've probably done this in their own life, so that's why they're telling you, because they're just giving you, they're just giving you the kind of advice that they themselves would take. Let's face it. Um, defeatists are the kind of people as well, when you, when you go for anything that, um, that has a risk involved or looks too challenging, they'll try to encourage you to back out of it. Now, what makes them, um, what makes them so toxic is that quite often they sound like the voice of reason. Their arguments sound fairly logical, but... Uh, You've got to understand the spirit that that comes from. It doesn't come from a spirit of, well, well, these are the facts and this is why you shouldn't do it. It doesn't come from that. You see, you can have good, um, fr you can have good friends and mentors, people who are actually positive, uh, people who none of these attributes apply to, good people in your life. And you might, be, uh, you might be pursuing a job opportunity or a relationship and they might take you aside and they'll say, look, you know, do you really think this is a good idea? And they'll lay forward their case for why, why that's a bad idea. But I'm not talking about those kind of people. Even though they might say much the same things, it's the spirit they say it with that is toxic. Because with these people, their spirit is, is, is a spirit of cowardice. Oh, I'll just give up when it gets too hard, you know. Um, what do you want to work out for? You know, you need drugs and you need the perfect, uh, you need the perfect uh, genes to have a good body. Or why do you want to go, go and start your own business? You know, you know how many businesses end up bankrupt? Just go get a comfy job somewhere. You might have heard that one from your parents too. Or, you know, uh, why are you going for that girl or that guy? They never go for people like you. They're way out of your league. This is all projection, you know. I mean, what's projection? Projection is just accusing the other person of that which you are guilty yourself. So when these people tell you, try to suggest that you're not good enough or that you don't have what it takes, they're just imagining themselves being in your position. And that's what they would think about themselves. And this is why they're toxic people, because they're not going to support you when the times get tough. They're going to be that little voice of reason, what sounds like that voice of reason in your ear telling you to quit, telling you to give up. And, you know, defeatists are cowards. They're cowards. And um, what makes them, what makes it so toxic, is that uh, the life that they, the life that they preach, is a life of spiritual death. You might remember in uh, in, in Braveheart, and that stirring scene when William Wallace is, is on horseback, and uh, they're about to go into battle for the first time. And I'm paraphrasing here, but he says something like, he says, you know, you could all, you could all turn around and go home today, but you know. Would you, would you give dying in your bed 50 years from now for just this one chance, this one chance at getting our freedom? And the thing about, the thing about defeatists is that uh, they don't really live. And if you want more than that, you know, you're going to take risks and there's going to be hardships. It's just a, it's a fact of life. There's nobody, nobody who's achieved anything great and hasn't been through those, those trying times. I have myself in the last few years. Uh, so has anybody, any mentor that you have, whether you've met them or not, anybody you look up to, happens the same for all of us. But what really makes the difference is, do you stick with it and do you make adjustments that, uh, that are better for you, that, uh, that help you to grow, that are good for you spiritually and, and good for you uh, when working towards long-term success in the, in the areas that are important to you? Or are you just taking the easy option? Are you taking the coward's option? 
Are you dying? Are you choosing the options that will that, that are just helping you to die slowly? Because that's what defeatists choose every time. So if you're wanting to live a life where you choose in favor of risks, you choose in favor of going beyond what you could imagine, then you need to cut these people loose. That's the long and short of it. Number five on the list, drama kings and drama queens. Now, you've probably known people like this in your life. Uh, if you have people like this in your family, I'm sorry for you because I know that uh, that's a tie that's a bit more difficult to cut out. But uh, what you can do with these people at the very least is uh, harm minimization. The thing with drama kings and drama queens is it's always complicated with them, isn't there? There's always some crisis going on, whether it's a personal crisis, uh, a money crisis, a relationship crisis, a health crisis. You know, insert terms, there's a crisis. Now, if they could deal with this on, by, by themselves, it wouldn't be such a problem. But uh, who is it they keep coming to when the shit hits the fan again? It's you, isn't it? Now... Maybe you've made the mistake of just wanting to be that friend in need or that brother or sister in need and try and help these people along. The problem is, is that uh, the problem is that they've they've established this pattern where when something goes wrong, they, they, they turn to you straight away in the hope that you're gonna fix it. And it's unhealthy because it's a drain on your energy, it's a drain on your time, and it's a drain on your brain power. Uh, we've all got limited amounts of energy, and we've all got uh, limited amounts of time, and that doesn't change for anybody. So why do you want to waste so much time and energy on these people's problems? Because don't your problems come first? I mean, look, we all we've all had times where we've relied on, you know, we've relied on friends or colleagues or family to help us, but it should be a rare occasion. It shouldn't be happening all the time. So if, if, you know, if it's happening all the time with these people and they're not paying you for it, you know, you're not a psychologist or a business coach or something like that, then why do you keep on helping them? Like, what are you getting out of it? And a really great way of uh, establishing whether these people are, are worth keeping in your life or not is just stop for a moment and just think about all the time that you spend with these people and how much of that time is actually fun. How much of that time is just, you know, hanging out with them and discussing constructive ideas and having a laugh and actually enjoying yourselves as opposed to having to put out another fire for them and, and, and uh, talk them through their latest, their latest crisis? If, if you had to divide that up, what percentage of your time is spent doing the enjoyable things versus having to help them through another crisis? Um, if it's anything... You know, if, if it's 50-50, then even then, that's a relationship that you want to reconsider. Uh, but if it's anything more than that in favor of having to deal with the drama, then, you know, you've got to put these people on the back burner or cut them out altogether. Now, what's going to make this difficult is if you do, if, if you, uh, do decide to cut them out is that they're, they're often quite needy people uh, and they're not just going to let you hobble off into the sunset. They're going to keep trying to pursue you. Um, and so you might have to have that harsh conversation with them and just say, look, this is what I'm trying to do with my life. I have enough of my own problems. You need to deal with your problems yourself. And uh, it could be the tough love that they've always needed because um, with, with some of these people, it's really just the fact that for whatever reason, people have always been too accommodating with them and people have never said, look, you've got to deal with this yourself. And if you back off, you might actually be showing them how to deal with their problems themselves and not to become... Uh, such drama kings or drama queens, not to become such needy people. And just leave them to it. You know, It's okay to walk away and you shouldn't feel an obligation to keep you know, running after them and helping them whenever there's, there's, there's problems in their life. Because it's not good for them and it's not good for you. So change it. Who's next? Blabbermouths and trash talkers. Yeah, these... These people can be can be good entertainment. You've probably been out to dinner with them or at the pub or somewhere like that and they tell these hilarious stories about other people. They love to talk about other people. Uh, the problem is is that, <clears throat> well, first of all, if they love to talk about other people and, you know, criticise other people, then what makes you think that you're any different? Like when your back's turned, when you're, when you're not there, 
do you think that you get a free pass? Or do you think maybe they just treat you as more uh, conversational firewood to burn up? The other thing with these people, if, if they're not someone who, who talks about other people all the time, but they're just somebody who, you know, blab, 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 blabs, is that uh, it can be difficult to draw the line sometimes, you know? They're going to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. They're going to offend people unnecessarily. Um, and just because of their, their loose lips, again, if you're associating with them all the time, you're going to get dragged into their problems. And, you know, people could end up having a negative view of you because of, of the people that you're with. Because of the people that you're with, uh, just they don't think before they talk and they just blurt out stuff that you might have told them in confidence, you know, that can cause way more trouble than what you bargained for. And you'll notice throughout the, the, these seven types of people that I've mentioned so far, the common theme, even though they're different people, the common theme is, <clears throat> excuse me, the common theme is that, look, these people might have their own problems to deal with as everybody else does, but why should you be dragged into that? Why should you? You know, you've got enough problems to deal with in your own life, so why unnecessarily create even more problems for yourself with these people? If you're trying to build, why, you know, why have these people keep trying to tear down what you're building at? If you're trying to fill your cup, these people are like little drill holes in the bottom. They just make it that much more difficult, and it takes that much more time for you to fill your cup. So with, <clears throat> excuse me, with, with trash talkers, is yeah, look, as the saying goes, loose lips sink ships, and these people are only going to bring you undone with your words, or they're two-faced, because there might be issues with you that they could tell you face-to-face, -face, but they don't. Like a coward, they wait till your back's turned and they talk about it to other people. And why do you need people like that in your life? If you're going to have, you're going to have a, an inner circle, you're going to have a close group of friends and colleagues, you want people who are going to be honest with you. You might not always agree with their judgments, but you should at least know that if they've got an issue with you, they'll talk about it. They're not just going to passively act like, oh, you know, everything's all right. And then as soon as your back's turned, they're, you know, just blah, blah, blah. Oh, he's such a bad person. Oh, blah, blah. She's such a bad influence. Blah, blah. Cut those people out. Let them go talk about someone else. Yeah, they probably will still talk about you from time to time, but that's their problem to deal with, isn't it? That's not your problem to deal with at all. You want to be successful? Find people who've got the guts to say to your face what they would say behind your back. Find people who have the guts to challenge you. And find people who are smart enough to know when to keep their mouth shut. Uh, because that can create way more problems than what you initially bargained for. Okay. So last on this list at number seven uh, is critical people. For, thing, uh, for, for critical people like... The world's hardly ever good enough, or nothing's ever good enough, and they're usually complaining. These people are fairly easy to spot. Um, they're, they're damaging to you on a psychological level because if you're if you're big on the abundance spirit, which you should be, if, if you're aiming for success, if you're aiming to be happier, to be more content more often, then you should be big on, on the abundance spirit, on attracting good things of abundance and people of abundance into your life. And these people are the opposite of that. And you can often uh, tell it by their words, just by the kind of stuff that they talk about, the language that they use. You know, they use a lot of you know negative words like "oh, this will never happen," or "people can't do this," or "all these people are wrong," or "this is horrible." That sort of judgmental negative language they use that a lot. Um, they seem to have this view that all but about twenty percent of the population of the world is is on their level, and that everybody else is beneath them somehow. It doesn't matter how well they know these people or. Um, if, if they've even met them, they just presume, well, you know what, I'm better and smarter and, and more, you know, whatever than 80% of the people in the world. Very, they have a very us and them view. Um, you know, if they're, if, if they're a woman, you know, that they've had their fingers burned by bad relationships in the past, they have these negative views about all men um, as a defense mechanism. Again, if they're a man and they've had their fingers burned in the past, then the, they have the same attitudes towards women. They think, you know, all women are the same and, and that sort of stuff. And it's just, it's cancer. It's what they call black pill thinking. And you'll see in the article, I've actually included a link to what black pill thinking actually is uh, and why it's so toxic. But these people exhibit it in, in spades. And they're always, you know, complaining about society or about the government or about big business. They do have some attitudes that tie in a bit with the professional victims, but more so just... As the name suggests, they are, they're critical people. They're just always critical of stuff. Uh, they're a negative force to be around. 
And uh, you know, they could be useful people. They could be good at their jobs or very skilled at uh, at their profession or what they do. But if you uh, if there is some value to be had associating with these people, then uh, do it in moderation. You know, don't don't let these people have too much of an influence in your life and, and drag you down because you don't need that. So that uh, that rounds out the list, guys. There's seven toxic people for you to avoid and. Uh, as I said in the article as well, look, you know, I understand that going through this, there may be certain names that that spring to mind. Uh, there might there might have been certain faces in your life that uh, became prominent as you read it, and it might be uncomfortable to realise that. I know myself. I mean, I've had I've had periods in life where I didn't really have many close friends, and my my social calendar was was pretty empty. And then I've had other other periods in my life where you know I, I had a lot of friends, a lot of contacts, and you know nearly every night uh, and every weekend as well, it was was full. I still remember when I was about I was about twenty five or twenty six, and I had these um, excuse me I had I had these flatmates. They were two girls, and they were like eighteen, nineteen. I was about twenty five, and you know they they weren't nerds at all. They were out doing stuff a fair bit as well. But uh, one night I came home and. One of them made the comment that I must think that they were a bunch of losers who had no life just because I was out that often. You know, weeknights, um, weekends, I had always had invites to be here, there. So over the years, I've, I've, I've known a lot of different people. Like I've known people who fit every one of these these, these categories. Uh, but it seems to be quite a universal thing. Uh, yeah, you just, the older that you get, the more you begin to see see people as they really are. And that was what inspired me to write this article because especially for younger people, if you're you know in high school or just started uni, you might not be able to um, to put a finger on why certain people make you feel a certain way or what it is that just doesn't seem right. Uh, and so if, if writing, the, if writing the, these two articles back to back, if that helps you to identify somebody that maybe you can put to the background in your life or maybe that you can turn your back on altogether then that's a great thing you've got plenty of time in front of you and uh, you're not obligated to spend your time with any of these people they may be in your family but even then just you know put your distance there because your problems your goals your ambitions they're number one being content that should be your priority being content managing your limited time and your energy that should be your number one priority and don't let anybody drain that from you and I realize that uh, you know, if you take action on this, if you have those uncomfortable conversations with people or if, if you cut people out of your life altogether, there may, there may be a quiet period there and you may, may never have experienced that before because maybe the people that you'd been comfortable associating yourself with, the people that you'd been comfortable hanging around with, maybe the majority of them are these toxic people. And uh, without them, you can realize like your world can suddenly feel very quiet and uh, it can be it can be challenging to deal with if you've never encountered that before but uh, we were made for community so you know it won't last as, as long as you know the right kind of people to attract and um, in a nutshell if you want to know the right kind of people to attract then just go back and look through these look through these seven people and think about the opposites think about you know people who are positive people who are self-sufficient People who even, you know, when they don't really have, you know, when they've only got a few dollars in the bank account, they still they still believe that better days will come. Abundant people give you a different feeling. They give you this feeling that anything is possible. Anything good's possible. And you hang out with these people, and even if you chat to them on the phone for 10 minutes, generally speaking, you come away feeling good about yourself, you know? Find more of those people. You only get to live once and... We don't know how much time we've got on this planet, so spend it with good people. You know, um, but yeah, I, I, I just wanted to write this list, like I said, because I've reached this point where I begin to identify people for what they really are, and you get to that point where you start thinking to yourself, "All right, considering what I want to do, considering what I want to achieve, want to want to uh, want to accomplish, who are the people that um, who are the people that I want to associate with?" Uh, you'll see in, in the article as well that I inc included an old quote that I posted. And it says, Becoming great surrounded by losers is climbing a high mountain. Becoming surrounded by winners is falling towards success. So 
Find the winners. Find the good people. Find the good influences. You don't have to climb a high mountain. Why not fall towards success and contentment instead? So let me know what you think, guys. Uh, yeah, I understand if, if it means that you have to have some difficult conversations and you have to endure some quiet periods, but uh, I can tell you, I can guarantee you that uh, in the long term, it will all pay off. And if there's some hard decisions to be made now, you'll be glad you made them. So let me know what you think, guys. Smash that like button to uh, borrow the old cliche. Share this article with anybody who, well, probably not with the toxic people, but uh, with, with anybody who maybe is, is uh, letting these toxic people bring them down. Share, this, uh, share this, this video with anybody out there. And share the article too, and, and read both those articles if you haven't, because I go into more detail about the characteristics of every one of the seven types of people that I've gone through here. But let me know what you think, guys. I hope you got something of real value out of this uh, because out of all the articles that I've written, this one took me the longest amount of time to, to go forward and write. But uh, it's all for you guys. It's all so that you will hopefully make the good changes in your life for the better. So that's it from me. Uh, there'll be a shorter video next time. But uh, yeah, I wanted to leave this with you today. Plenty, of, plenty there for you to ruminate on. Until next time, I'll catch you later.